Hi guys, Veronica here, and today I am going to show you how to make a digital scrapbook page in five minutes. That's right, just five minutes. I'm going to show you some digital scrapbooking tips that are going to help you do some super speed scrapping. And the very first thing that I want to say is that this tutorial assumes that you already have your photos edited because photo editing and digital scrapbooking are the same but kind of different. So I have already edited these photos for my page, but if you would like some photo editing tips, be sure to tune into my tutorial that's coming next week and I will give you some great tips on how to make sure that the pages, that the photos you are using are going to blend perfectly with your scrapbook page. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, the first thing that you want to do to help you scrap more speedily is, is that a word? I don't know. But anyway, if you want to be a speedy scrapper or do some speed scrapping speedily, you are going to have to get organized. That's the very first step. So what I have done here is open all the items that I plan to use right here in my photo bin. That's step one. And the next thing is you want to have some kind of idea or plan of what you might want to do. Sometimes you might just want to let it come all together as you flow along, but you know, that might take you a little bit longer. But sometimes, hey, you do what you have to do. Um, so to get started, what the very first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new document because we don't want to be working on any of our existing files. So we'll go to File, New, Blank File. And of course, we're going to choose the scrapbooking preset. And I always have mine set to transparent. And then I will just choose OK. So they created that document for me and it went way down here, but I would like it to be up here. So I'm going to rearrange it and put it right there. All right, let's get started. I am going to start my timer and we'll see how this page comes together. So starting five minutes from now, the first thing I'm going to do is drag in my background paper. And I've chosen this beautiful paper with all the gorgeous little butterflies on it because it's just so cute. I'm gonna zoom up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And this right here is a little trick that I do quite often. And this is what's called a stacked background. I'm gonna try not to talk too much because I'll run out of time. Um, this is what's called a stacked background. It's already pre-designed. And basically what you would do is just go here and add some photographs, but it's flattened. So, you know, you're only allowed to add things on top of it. You can't interchange or intermix layers. So I'm going to take this and drag it onto that layer. I mean, onto that document. And then what I'm going to do is turn that off for a minute. And what I have done is chosen this um, frame here, and it's called tattered frame or something or another. Now, what you can do to save yourself some more time is if you right click, you can add this to your favorites, and then right down here where you have your favorites, you can always pull that up anytime you want. That's another tip to help you save some time. I don't have it in my favorites, so I'm just going to click and drag it over here. And what I did is I made it a little bit larger, but I also distorted the um, aspect ratio so that it's also longer. And then click OK because, yeah, I need to commit that before I can do anything else. And now I can click here to drag um, my photo in. So I'll go back to the photo bin and drag that photo in there. And I'll zoom up so you can see 
Now here you have your little editing bar that lets you zoom up or down and adjust it the way you want. Now I can't go down too much because as you can see it's going to not fit into the bounds of the frame. I can move it around a little bit. So here I have a choice. Do I want all of the heart or all of the hair? I'm going to go with the heart because it's cute. I mean, she's cute too, but you know, I need that heart in there. Or I could just make it a little bit smaller and have the best of both worlds. Okay, how's that work? Pretty good, right? So that's done. Click yes. And now what I'm going to do is because, you know, when you're using this Photoshop Elements, I'm going to go here to my layers. When you're using this Photoshop Elements and you leave these files open like this, when you're dragging elements in back and forth, sometimes they can get caught in here. And I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but let me show you what I mean. So I want to drag this flower into the pic into onto the document. But if I happen to drag here, you see what happened? Ah, oh, I don't like that. So I'm going to just um go back up here to where I transformed this thing right there. And now what I'm going to do is that I this is my history panel and I advise you to use that because it lets you do undos really quickly because I could have done here do a control Z command Z or I could have done undo whatever but I just like to use this and just go up to the last step that looked great to me so what I'm going to do to avoid that is come up here make a new layer and then hold down my shift key or command key or control. It doesn't matter because I'm only selecting two layers and then right click and then merge those two layers. And then that way you won't be able to add anything else into that. Okay. This mission might be a fail. Don't judge me, you guys. <laughs> okay. So where was I? I'm going to zoom out so we can see exactly where we were. So now that I have my photo positioned, I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Just a smidge, not too much. And then commit that by clicking the little check. And now I'll turn this back on and I will right click to simplify. Sometimes you'll hear me say rasterize because that's what they call it in Photoshop and I'm used to saying that, but here they call it simplify. So basically you're converting that image from a vector or smart object to a raster. And then I'm going to grab my eraser and I want a great big one and I want it to be really, really soft. So I'm going to come down here and grab this. It's a 300, but not big enough for me. So I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger. And I was erasing on that. Oh, look at that. It's cute. She's peeking through. And then what I'm going to do is just erase, you know, a good portion of this. And I'm going to grab this selection tool, rectangular selection tool, and I'm going to right click and lay a via, uh, I'm going to do lay a via cut because I, I need that on a separate layer. And I'm just going to move this over to about right there. And okay, so the very next thing we did is I added a gradient here. So I took my rectangular selection tool and we're gonna add a new layer. And then we're gonna come here. Now the last time I deleted this little flower at the end, but this time I think I'm gonna keep it cause it's cute. And then we're gonna come over here to gradients and we're going to adjust our colors by doing that. Okay, and keep that top color is pretty good. And then we're going to just come in here and once you're using your gradient tool, and I'll zoom in so you can see, you have this little crosshair, I guess you call it, I don't know. And all you're gonna do is just come in here 
and draw like that. Now, if you draw like that, you see how the blue is at the top and the cream is at the bottom. But if you drew the other way, it would be reversed. See that? So it's just a matter of how you wanted to do it. And it, that applies to the same if you were drawing it left to right or right to left. Okay, so select and then deselect. And then that would be fine if I was going if I hadn't kept those flowers there, but since I did, now I'm going to have to go in and do some erasing. Oh my god, I have 1 minute left. This mission is an absolute fail. So, I am going to just turn off the timer because I'm not going to make it in 5 minutes or even 10 minutes because I'm talking too much as usual and um I'm not going to be able to do it. So that's how you would do this. Just erase around there the edges that you want to keep. And you could make the brush a little bit smaller. If you hold down the bracket keys on your keyboard, you can control your so the size of your brush. I'm going to erase that because I went too far in because I couldn't see what I was doing. And sometimes if you need to do that, you, you want to see what you're working on beneath. You just lower the opacity a little bit. And then that way I can see exactly what I need to erase and then just erase accordingly. See how that works? Guys, I am so sorry that I said I was going to do this in five minutes because clearly I can't. But technically speaking, you could do this page in five minutes if you weren't talking through it, okay? So test it out and let me know if you were able to do it. Okay, so that looks good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. We've got a beautiful gradient and some cute little flowers. And now all we have to do is add um, our frame. So we're going to go back to graphics. And this time I chose this frame right here. It's called white scalloped ring. And boom, I'm gonna drag it over here. And I don't know why I'm so excited today. <laughs> and we're gonna put it right here. Cute, right? It sure is. And then we're going to just drag our photo into place and we choose this one this time. And we drag it into place. And I pretty much like that, how it is, but you can play with it a little bit. I think I'm going to move it just like that. Great. Fantastic. Love it. I'll zoom in just to make sure it is completely filling all the areas. And it is. And so that's good. So we can double click or if you see a little thing there you just click on that but it disappeared because I moved up a little bit okay now I'm gonna go back to layers and if you thought that was a little too big which I kind of do you can just grab your transform tool and size it down a little bit and it sizes the whole thing so you are good and I'll put that right there and then finally what we're going to do is just add this little um, embellishment here and we just drag it onto the page. Oh, you see what happened? I hate when that happens. So we're going to go back, go back. And I could, like I said, just come up here, add a new layer select both layers, right click and merge those two layers together. So now that it's flat and that mask is no longer inside there and then just drag that in again. And we'll do this here to put that there. So cute, so cute, so cute. And um, finally, we will just add some text. And I wrote on this, and I'm using the font, which I use all the time, because sometimes I get, I love fonts, love, love, love them, but sometimes I get lazy about selecting them. So at 72 points, we are going to come in here and select this color, or just some color in here, whatever looks good. I'll go with this deeper blue. 
Okay. And we're going to type your text, whatever you wanted to say. And commit that by just double clicking. And then finally, in here, I have this nine. And I'll put that right there. I'm actually, I'm going to put it right here because I think that looks cuter. And I will take my text wherever it is. Oh, here it is, way down here, <laughs> and push it up here. And then what I'm going to do is come on top of this paper here, add a new layer, and then I'm going to grab a selection tool, my marquee selection tool. I've got my feather set to 120, and I'll come in here and just make a circle around there, just like that. Basically just selecting the inner sides, and then I am going to hit D on the keyboard to go back to my control colors. I mean my default colors and grab the paint brush or paint bucket and fill that with white and you can do it a second time if it didn't give you enough of, of an effect and then select deselect control D command D whatever you're using and um, we can go in here and add a couple more embellishments if you like and you know I like to because I love embellishments they're cute <laughs> And we will just um, size that down a little bit. Click to commit it. I did add a couple of butterflies because pff, you know I love butterflies. Like everything that I make usually includes a butterfly. Nine times out of ten it will because I love them. Uh, so we will right click. I'm selecting this out. Now this is going to save me some time because it's already pre-shadowed. It comes in a cluster pack. Oh, I didn't even mention what I'm using in this page, but, um, so I'm going to do select all and it's only selecting the layer that I have checked. And, um, I will say copy and then I'll come back to my page and then paste it and then control V you know, you know how to paste control V or is it command V? I guess so. And we'll put a butterfly there or maybe even here, but I'm going to have to drag it up a little bit. And also, you know, do that, transform it a little and see if you like it. And if you do commit it and then I'll duplicate that butterfly and add one up here. And then because this isn't shadowed, I'm going to actually make it a little bit smaller. We're going to have to come in here to effects and add a shadow. So we'll go to shadows and we're going to put a really big one, this one here and drop that on there. And then we will go to our settings and lower the, actually we're going to change the color first gonna make that some, something like that there something not too dark okay looks good and then we are going to still lower the opacity just a little bit and maybe even change the distance a little bit more okay that looks good and we'll say okay and there is our scrapbook page it looks adorable it was an epic fail in that no I did not do it in five minutes but sometimes, you know what, you just have to let your creativity flow. It was a success in that we have a gorgeous page. So I hope you like this tutorial. And like I said, remember to tune in next week and I'm going to show you all about how I recolored these images to look fantastic on this page. And I'll show you how to do it for your pages as well. So thanks for tuning in. I'm Veronica. Enjoy your scrapbooking. And I'll see you next time. And remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already.